you are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is one that has the master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is one that has the master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is one that has that master key. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all of us into this um, wonderful uh, broadcast today. Today is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. I want to welcome all our viewers around the world as we come into this wonderful place of encounter today. And I believe that the Lord will cause his hand to rest upon every one of us. No one that is under the sound of my voice will leave this place the same way they came. I welcome you into this session of last minute miracle service. I want us to know that the Lord has a word for us. As we are dealing with the keys to your 11 hour miracles, the keys to um, our 11th hour, which is almost the last few days right now. I've been off this platform for some few days now uh, because I was on a prayer retreat. So I'm just coming out of that prayer retreat to come and talk to us tonight. And I believe that the word that the Lord asks for you, that word is going to produce wonders in your life. We are just listening to a song in this particular service. And I welcome all our members in Washington, DC, 
London. And London, I welcome all of us into this uh, service. Um, those of us that are watching uh, on Facebook and those watching on, uh, on Zoom and other social platform, I want to welcome you. And I know that the Lord has a word for us. You will not leave this service without a healing touch of God today in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm confident that the Lord will stretch forth his hand to touch somebody, to heal somebody. Just like the Bible says, why Peter yet speak these words? We are told the Holy Ghost fell on the people. Why Peter yet speak these words from the Lord? The Holy Ghost landed on the people. And that is what is going to happen today. Why speaking these words to you? The Holy Ghost will land on your life. The Holy Spirit will manifest in your life. The Holy Ghost will break forth in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As we start this broadcast, please help me share this message. Uh, help me share it with your friend, share it on your uh, platform. Let somebody receive uh, uh, the word of the Lord this, this evening. Um, I believe that every one of us that is here in this season, this is the last few days of the month of November, 11th hour, so this is longer Talking about we're talking about last minute miracles. Uh, I believe that <laughs> you are going to grab your own breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not leave this platform empty-handed. So please help me share this message with somebody. Let somebody receive a word that will be passed across tonight. And I believe that you shall receive the blessing of God for that in Jesus name. Now, we have been talking about uh, 11, the wisdom for 11 hour miracle. And let me let you know that 11 hour miracle, they all have their access. They have their access. And I believe they have the access that have been tested tested access to the 11 hour miracle. And I believe that that access as the word of God is coming forth, the Lord will help you to be able to get that access or get understanding of that access that will bring you into your own portion of the 11th hour miracle in Jesus name. We've been talking about 11th hour miracle as the from the Matthew chapter 20, where we saw people that were not hired uh, at the first hour of the day of the of a walk that was being done in Matthew chapter 20 from verse 1 to 16. We saw that he said this parable is likened to a man uh, that went out to hire laborers. That is how they describe this uh, 11 hour miracle. It's likely to a man that went to hire a laborer to go into his vineyard to labor for him. And Bible says he went early in the morning to hire some people. And Bible says he went out at the third hour also to go and hire some people to pay them what is right for them. He went again about the sixth hour, about the ninth hour, and did likewise. On the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle. And he said, why have you been standing idle all day? And they said, because no one hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. Whatever is right, you will receive. 
and we saw there those people 11th hour candidate they have been standing there all day so there is some things that made it possible for these guys even at the 11th hour to still receive their their own inheritance even though at the last hour of the working day now some people at the beginning of this year uh, early this year january march june july september because of this pandemic and confusion and pandemonium that is going on right now around the world and things are being turned upside down they have not received what heaven has ordained for them in 2020 but we saw like those guys that that were standing there in verse six they stayed they stayed on there and what is it that made those guys to stay on until they are help out doesn't located the number one who said it was mercy of god number two they stayed in persistence and consistency they didn't give up number three was spoken about the help of god and number four uh i'll be talking about the place of prayers and that is the prayer is one of the keys to the 11th hour miracle one of the keys we see it is mercy we have seen at the place of consistency we have seen all those things how those things have helped these guys to be able to receive their Another thing that worked for this guy was the fact that this guy was also engaged in certain prayers that made the 11th hour miracle a reality. And that is what we are talking about in this, in this particular uh, section. There are certain kind of prayers this guy was praying. I believe that open the door to this 11th hour miracle because miracles are simply god's intervention in the affairs of men miracles can be defined as the deliberate acts of god that are provoked by the desperate faith of men miracles can be defined as the deliberate acts of god provoked by the desperate faith of men. Miracles can also be defined as heaven's intervention in human's affairs. So there are certain things I believe these guys were doing that made heaven to intervene to see to it that these guys did not finish their journey empty-handed. And had not that man come out to meet them at that 11 hour, they will have finished and gone back home completely with nothing but except for that intervention and i believe that is how god will interview for somebody here today that is how somebody that is here today if you can shout amen like thunder i know heaven will intervene for you in the name of jesus christ you will not finish this year empty-handed yes the year is going to an end but God is speeding up his work because the la the best is reserved for the last. I pray for someone that is watching today that the Lord will show forth his hand in your affairs in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, you will receive your own miracles, your own 11th hour miracle. Maybe whatever that you have missed or that has missed you in this season, I see you breaking into it in the name of Jesus Christ. I see the hand of the Lord showing forth his hand in your affairs in the name of Jesus Christ. And every one of us that is here, I believe that your hand will collect what heaven has ordained for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Looking at this 11th hour miracles, uh, we saw it here that there are certain things these guys were doing uh, that opened the door to this 11th hour miracle. We saw that one of, the, one of those things is prayers. And looking at it as one of the keys, I would say only God know in the 
this 11th hour candidate, they must have been crying to God when they were standing there. Remaining one hour to go, they must have prayed, Lord, let this man come back. Though it was late, just one hour to go, I believe they must have sang this song, Pass me not by gentle savior. Hear my gentle cry. They must have cried to God, Lord, don't let this hour pass by. Nevertheless, the man came back and their prayer was answered by mercy. The man came back and the, 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 the miracle was delivered to their hand. I pray for you watching me today. That person, that agent of the 11th hour miracle, that God needs to bring you away for your own testament to be complete. I pray by the power of God, by the mercy of God, the Lord will push them out to meet with you in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, by the antecedent of this man, the last time he came out was the ninth hour because he goes out every three, three hours. His last assignment is to go out at the twelfth hour to say to the people that have labored and he break his protocol for the eleventh hour miracle because of their prayers. Perhaps it was a combination of mercy and the and prayer and their prayers that pushed this man out. The man has prepared the wages of the workers to go out at the twelfth hour, but a force pushed him out at the eleventh hour. And that is why you must pray that God should make you a candidate of the eleventh hour miracles. And I believe that the prayers that man prayed was what opened that door to him. And a very good example of somebody that came to mind that received this kind of this kind of miracle by praying was blind Bartimaeus. In the book of Mark 11, verse 10, the book of Mark, verse 11, Mark chapter 10, let's see how this man engaged the key of prayer to secure his 11 hour miracle. I want us to know that blind Bartimaeus is a very good example of somebody that received 11 hour miracle by the key of prayers. And if the Lord can do it for blind Bartimaeus, you are at a better state than blind Bartimaeus right now because that Jesus was passing through that place in Mark 10, verse 46. Bible said, then they came, to, they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that was Jesus, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But they warned him to be quiet, and he cried out all out the more. He cried out all out the more. He prayed the more. The more they tried to stop him, not to get his 11 hour miracle, the more he cried out. That is the key of prayer there. This man, blind Bartimaeus, a secure is 11 hour, 11 hour miracle because that was the last time Jesus was passing that place. If you'll notice, shortly after the miracles of blind Bartimaeus, Jesus' journey to Golgotha began. That is the last time Jesus was passing that place. So that particular time was Bartimaeus' last chance. That was a last minute miracle for him. If he has missed Jesus in that place, he will have died 
blind. And that is why it's very crucial for somebody to press for their own 11 hour miracle. Because if you miss this time, I don't know when it will come again. A blind Bartimaeus not cried out and cried out in a manner that secure Jesus attention, he will have died blind. It will have ended empty. His name will not be here today. What are we saying? If you don't cry out to God in this season, in this last minute, in this last few days, it's possible that you won't have anything throughout this remaining part of the year. But I forbid that for you because mercy will prevail in your case today in the name of Jesus Christ. If blind Bartimaeus has missed it, if he has not cried out, if he has not cried for intervention, if he has not cried for his 11 hour miracle, if he has not cried out and said, this is my last chance. If he was not desperate to cry out to God, he would have died blind. And in a similar way to many of us that are watching today, if you don't do something, if you don't cry out, you will miss out of everything that this 11th hour has to offer. But I pray for you today, you will not miss that in Jesus' name. And what kind of prayer, what are the components of that kind of prayer that produce 11 hour miracle? We saw that in James chapter 5. Please help me share this message with somebody. James chapter 5. From verse 16. James chapter 5, from verse 16. The Bible says here, James, it was talking about the mannerism in which way that Elijah prayed that secure as heaven attention. He said in James 5 16, he said here. Confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The Bible says, make tremendous power available. Now, what is the point? What are the keys? What are the nuggets of the kind of prayer that will produce 11 hour miracle. Four keys I'm going to show us from here. Four points I will show you from here. Number one, that prayer must be effectual. The prayer that will secure everyone's attention, that prayer must be effectual. He said the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man is a make tremendous power available. If a tremendous, effectual, fervent prayer. So we know, notice that the prayer of blind Bartimaeus was highly effectual, even though it was a short prayer but heavily effectual. To be effectual means to be serious. The prayer by blind Bartimaeus was a serious prayer. He was blind, yet he prayed a serious prayers. He prayed prayer that secures everyone's attention. Even though he was blind, but the blindness did not stop him from crying out. So what kind of prayer is this? Is the prayer that has the ability to produce result and effect. To be effectual mean to be efficient. To be effectual mean to be a fruitful prayer, a productive prayer, a serious prayer. His prayer was so serious that nobody could shut him down. They try, the Bible says that he cried out, Jesus, 
thou son of David, have mercy on me. They tried to stop him. He shouted the more. That is effectual. That is a prayer that cannot be stopped. A determined, serious prayers. Only serious prayers are glorious prayers. A focused prayer. A prayer that he has made up his mind. This is my last chance. If I miss it, no other opportunity again. He gave it not a prayer whereby he was distracted. Not a prayer that he was doing at the same time was still answering phone. No. He knew if he's distracted and Jesus goes, that is the end of that opportunity for him. A, a, it was a serious prayers. So if you want to pray prayers that will secure your 11 up miracle, you have to be serious in the place of prayer. A cry out for mercy. And it was a serious one that everybody tried to stop him. And he broke every barrier to make sure, even though I am blind, I won't allow anybody to stop me. But the good thing about this prayer is this. Blind Bartimaeus was crying out to Jesus. That Jesus is not the same Jesus we are crying to right now. That Jesus was a limited one. That Jesus has not gone to the cross. Christ has not died and resurrected. He was limited. He can only be in one place at a time. But the Jesus you are crying to right now is the resurrected Jesus. Is the Jesus that is not limited by, by space. It's not limited. It's everywhere at the same time. It's omnipresent. The same Jesus that had blind Bartimaeus is the same Jesus that we hear you tonight. Number two kind of prayer, component of this prayer is fervent, effectual, fervent. That prayer must be fervent. To be fervent means to be warm. To be fervent means to be hot. It was a hot prayer. It was a hard seated prayer. How do you pray a fervent prayer? A fervent prayer is a prayer that is coming from the heart. It's a heart seated prayers. And that prayer, we saw it in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 1. The person that prayed this kind of prayer was Anna. In 1 Samuel 1, verse 12, we are told here, is that it happened as she continued praying before the Lord. Eli washed her mouth, her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. Eli said, to how long will you be drunk? Put away your wine away from you. And Anna answered and said, no, my Lord. I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. Um, I have neither, I, I, I have drank neither wine nor intoxicating wine, but poured out my soul before the Lord. I poured out my soul before the Lord. And do you not consider your maid servant a wicked woman? For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I cried out to the Lord. She was talking to out of my soul. I'm crying out out of my soul i am that is this prayer is coming out of the depth of my being that is the kind of prayer that secure heaven's attention in fact she prayed in a manner that even eli that was there he caught his attention even eli thought she was drunk but no she was not she was praying a heart fervent, at seated prayer. If the prayer is coming from your heart, it will be fervent. Only prayer that is coming from the heart can be called a fervent prayer. 
he said, out of the abundance. But verse 13 says, look at verse 13 again. The Bible says, now Anna spoke in her heart only. That's where you see that verse. Anna spoke in her heart. But our, our lips moved. Our voice was not heard. There is the speaking in the heart. There is the speaking in the mouth. When your heart is speaking, it will notify your mouth. Look at that prayer. She was, he said, now Anna spoke in her heart. That is fervent prayer from the heart. When there is prayer in your heart, it will notify your mind. Bible says, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. She was praying from the heart. She was praying from her heart. That is the kind of prayer that secure heaven's attention. Eli thought that she was drunk. It was a mad prayer. She was praying from the heart. The effectual, fervent prayer. And she was praying fervent prayer, hot prayer from her being. Every part of her is involved in that prayer. When you are praying fervent prayer, every part of you is in that prayer. That prayer got attention of the priest. Some people, their prayer cannot even go beyond the roof because their heart is not there. While they are busy praying, their heart has wandered away. They forgot what they have been praying about. They stopped the prayer, God, they are thinking of something else, and their mind went to something and they stopped. That prayer is not coming from the heart. Heart seated prayers are fervent prayers. Heart seated prayers are fervent prayers. Heart seated prayers are focused prayers. And that is the kind of prayer that will secure the heart of God. Just like the woman of the of, the, of, the, of that like the woman that had the issue of the blood. The Bible says she said in her heart, if only I can but touch the hem of his garment. She said in her heart. So the prayer must start in your heart. That kind of Lord, this is the 11th hour of 2020. The pandemic has shaken nations to their feet. Pandemic has affected the economic of nations. It has affected all manner of things. But I want to say to you right now, God knows everything inside this pandemic. God knows how to deliver your portion to you. So you are crying to God that, Lord, pass me not by gentle Savior. In these remaining days of this 11th hour, Lord, if you can do it for blind Bartimaeus, Lord, you can do it for me. Blind Bartimaeus collected his breakthrough at the 11th hour. Lord, let me not miss out. In this season, I want somebody to pray right now, wherever you are. We're going to pray, Lord, in this season, let me not miss out of what you have in stock for me. Let me not miss out. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray where you are at now. Let's pray. My father, my father, my father, we come right now just on the platform of mercy. We have come to the throne of grace. Begin to pray that, Lord, let me not finish this year empty-handed. Lord, whatever force that has to be at work on my behalf, let them begin to work right now. Let the force of mercy work for me. Begin to pray where you are. Begin to ask God, let the force of mercy that work for blind Bartimaeus, let that force work for you so that you will not miss out of your own 11 hour miracle. The last minute 
package that heaven has for me, I will not miss it. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray where you are. Lord, I cry for your mercy. I cry for your mercy. I have come to obtain mercy today. Oh God, you that answer, blind Bartimaeus that answer, Anna, and they collected the 11 hour miracle. You that answer, the man in Matthew 20 verse 6, Lord, answer us today. Let us secure our own 11 hour miracle. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Number three way to pray is a effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Righteousness. When you are praying, what does that mean? You are praying and you are doing things right. You are praying and you are doing things right. Being right with God and in right standing with men. What does righteousness mean? Praying and taking the right steps. There are things that you have to do when it comes to prayers. But there are also things you have to do, right things to do. What were those right things? They waited in that place. They didn't walk away. The factual fervent prayer of the righteous. That's the place of righteousness. Right standing with God and right standing with men. Right standing with God and right standing with men. Right standing with God and right standing with men. You are doing the right things you should do. You are praying for a job and you are applying. You are not just sleeping. You are praying and you are walking. You are taking the right step. You are praying for a husband and you are getting yourself ready for a husband. You are reading, you are studying, you are taking care of yourself. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are praying and you are taking the appropriate step you need to take. You are looking for a job. You don't look for a job praying only. You also have to apply. You are looking for something. There are physical steps you may need to take for that thing to come to your hand. And that is doing the right thing with God and with man. And that is the kind of prayer that I believe if you pray at this three dimension, effectual, fervent, righteous. If you do these three things, you are going to break loose into your inheritance. Look at blind Bartimaeus. He sat down where Jesus was. He sat down on the road. When they said, shut up, he shouted more. That is doing the right thing. He knew the right thing and he was doing the right thing. And what happened? Jesus stood, stood still and called him. I see Jesus calling you, stepping into your issue, giving you your miracles in Jesus' name. That's why they sing that song, my God is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. He will never fail. He will never fail. He will do what he says he will do. What is number four point of what thing you should do to secure your 11 hour miracle? Pray in the spirit. That is one thing that blind Batman did not have. Number one, your prayer will be effectual. Number two, your prayer will be fervent. Number three, it will be righteous. Number four, prayer in the spirit. Prayer in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit will take care of things you cannot take care of on your own. The Bible says that we know not how we ought to pray as we ought to. It said, but the spirit of God make it intercession for us according to the will of God. Romans chapter 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit helped our infirmity. We do not know how we ought to pray as we ought to. But the Spirit make intercession for us with groanings that cannot be altered. He that searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints 
according to the will of God. The will of God is that me and you will not leave this year empty-handed. The will of God is that you are going to finish this month with your own miracle. If God visited other people, it's going to visit you. If others are testimony, you are going to have testimony. Things are going to shift for you. Things are going to move into your hand. You will receive your own miracle, your own testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. The praying in the Holy Spirit help you to take care of the things you don't see. The unseen forces that has made you to miss your opportunity in the year. Forces that may be working against you that you are not aware of. When you are praying in the spirit, you are warring in the spirit. When you are praying in the spirit, you are praying according to the will of God for you. When you are praying in the spirit, you are pushing in the spirit. When you are praying in the spirit, you are pressing into your own inheritance. The Holy Ghost begin to help you to be able to pray. This is one of the ways to face the unknown is praying in the spirit. I do not mean empty, empty praying in tongues. Why you are also engaging, that is you cannot be praying in the spirit with God, spending time and still have enough time to be greeting everybody that's coming around you. Prayer in the spirit without active involvement of your mind is exercise in futility. When you are praying this, let me show you a secret. There must be a corresponding subject on your heart. That obstacle, which have been the object of your worry, must be in your mind as you pray in other tongues. And as you pray, your faith begin to be built up to stand against it. More scriptures, eye opening, eye opener on that subject begin to come into your mind. Suddenly, you begin to see the situation as it is in reality to the eyes of God. Illumination come into your mind because your spirit man, your spirit, you are praying and your spirit man is able to focus on the scripture. That is, you are praying in the spirit with a mission on your mind. You are praying in the spirit with a mission on your mind. You are not praying in the spirit and your, your spirit man is empty, no. You are praying in the spirit and your mind is on that scripture that says they were standing and the man said, why stand ye all day? Go in and also, and do your own work. And I will pay you. The, 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 somebody came in for him. He did not wait in vain. Just as he did not wait in vain, he waited in expectation till his manifestation came. Lord, in a similar way, I am waiting upon you for this 11th hour miracle. I will not miss it. Yagada bade geto prakata. I will not miss what you are for me. Malega yeke talege zetali gada babaya. You are the alpha and the omega. Magede bolu kariya gada babaya. O beli gezi talege zetaya. Whatsoever me, me to miss the opportunity at the beginning of this year, wherever this pandemic has taken from me in this season, I'm taking what belongs to me. You focus on that on that scripture. Because many people pray in the spirit, but they are not focused on the scripture they are praying on. So it's an empty prayers. When you are praying in the spirit, pray in the spirit with a mission on your mind. I'll say it again. Pray in the spirit with a mission on your mind. Pray in the spirit with a scripture on your mind. When you are praying the spirit, let a scripture be there that you are looking at or else it will be an empty prayers. Many people are praying the spirit, but there is no direction for that prayers. And that is why you need to change your approach. When you are praying the spirit, focus on the scripture. 
Focus on the Bible verse. Focus on the word. And as you do that, as you focus your mind on that scripture, your brain understanding, you go back to the spirit. Your brain understanding, you go back to the spirit. Jesus, you that had mercy on blind Bartimaeus, Lord, have mercy on me. You said in your word, it's not of him that run it, of him that will it, but of God that show mercy. Lord, show mercy on me. Magada, oh, break ye kata, oh, beni gezete, oh, bali gezeta. You said in your word, I will show mercy on him. I will show mercy. Magada. They are you said that you I will give compassion. No, my will give compassion. Lord, have mercy on me, oh God. My get a legacy. I have come to obtain mercy. And may get the get a or break get a. You focus on the scripture, you focus on praying, and you pray in the spirit. Your mind is focused on the scripture, your mind is focused on that scripture. I will not finish this year empty handed. You have said you crown the year with your goodness. You have said that this, you have said that the end is better than the beginning. Lord Jesus, you have done it for others. You will do it for me. You did it for Anna. Maga, Obragata, Ayagado Breketa, Yababalek, Lodabaya. You are praying the spirit with a focus on the spirit. You are, you are praying the spirit. Your mind is focused on scriptures. Maga, that is how you, as you are praying, understand it. You pray in the spirit. You came to the spirit. As you are praying that way, you are praying the will of God. You are building your most holy faith. When you pray, scripture focus. In, when you pray in the spirit with your mind focused on scriptures, you are building your spirit. But say, build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Jude 20. Build up your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. Magato preketa, ayu belegezete, e baligezeta. You are building up your faith to stand against all the wives of the devil. Let mercy prevail for me. Oh, the Bible says, eh, oh, in judgment, let mercy prevail. Lord, just like the book of Habakkuk, 3 verse 1 says, it says, in judgment, remember mercy. In judgment, remember mercy. Lord, remember me for mercy. Oh, the judgment, you said in the place of judgment, remember mercy. Habakkuk 3 verse 1, Magata regese, as as you put your mind on scripture and praying in the spirit, you are building your spirit. As you put your mind on scripture and praying in the spirit, you are building your spirit. I say it again. As you put your mind on scriptures, praying in the spirit, you are building your spirit. He said, Oh Lord, I've heard your voice. Habakkuk 3, verse 1. As I prayed, revive the one in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year, revive it. In rot, remember mercy. Ha. Lord, remember mercy. In this time of remembrance, remember mercy. Oh, you remember mercy for. Mordecai, you remember mercy for the man at, at the pool of Bethesda. You remember mercy for the gathering man. You remember mercy for blind Bartimaeus. Remember mercy for me. Magada gadeketa, megete leketa, ayagata, obreke dalakata, obreke degete. Lord, remember mercy. E balokata, ayagata leboseboria, ayakata, obreke dalakata. Lord, you remember mercy for 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 for. Bartimius, you remember mercy for him. Magata, oh ye brokota, that mercy turn his mess to a mercy. Oh, break it, take it, take. You focus. You focus on scriptures and praying in the spirit. Sometimes, even if it means opening your Bible, if it means opening your Bible, you open your Bible to that verse and you'll be, you'll be praying the verse and praying the spirit. You open your Bible and begin to look at it. You'll be praying in the spirit and look at that Bible verse 
and you are praying the spirit. That way you are building your spirit. You are building your most holy faith. You are building your faith in connection with the spirit. Particularly praying for mercy. What kind of prayer must you pray? I only give you one, and that's prayer of mercy. That's one prayer God cannot say no to. The prayer of mercy. The prayer of mercy. The prayer of mercy. Even as we partake of this communion, the purpose of the blood is to speak mercy for you. The purpose of the blood is to speak mercy for you. He said the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. The blood will speak as you partake of this communion tonight. Lord, let the blood speak. Let the blood speak for me tonight. As I partake of this communion, let the blood speak for me. Let the blood speak mercy. Magale ko pepe, the tongue of the blood. I'm speaking in the spirit. The blood speak it. It can speak mercy. Let the blood speak where I cannot speak. Let the blood speak for me. Magato breketa, amburo gazata, iyege dobre Let the blood speak. As I partake of this communion, let the blood speak for me today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. And what do you do to assess this? You must be born again. You give your life to Jesus. You ask Jesus to come into your life. You ask him to come into your heart, to come into your life. You tell him so. If you are not born again, that's where it begins from. The journey to your miracles, it begins with having Jesus come into your life. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you cannot see the kingdom of God until you repent. You repent of your sin and tell Jesus to forgive you of your sin. Many people want to be saved. They don't want to repent. Repentance is what opens the door to life. You ask the Lord, Forgive me my sins. Now I'm come to you just the way I am. Forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me with your blood. Wash me. And when you do that, the blood has a way of speaking to cleanse your heart. So if you are there, you are not born again, take this prayer after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Now if you have prayed that prayer, you give me your life to Christ. I want us right now to partake of this blood. This is communion. You can do it in your own house. Communion where you are. Take the communion where you are. I want to bring out the blood and his, and his flesh. And you are going to ask that the, the Lord will use this to speak mercy for you. The blood of Jesus was not yet shed that time. But the blood has been shed now. So wherever you are, Hebrews chapter 12, 24, Amplified Version. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. He spoke about the place of the blood. He said, Amplified said the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Uh, the blood will speak for you. The blood will speak for you. He said, here, yeah. he said unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the sprinkled blood that speak of mercy, a better and more noble, more gracious message than the blood of Abel that cry for vengeance. The blood of Jesus will speak of mercy as I partake of this communion today, Lord. Let this blood speak mercy for me in this last minute of this month. Let this blood speak for me. 
Let this blood be my lawyer. Let the blood be my lawyer. Let my, this blood be my Anthony. Speak for me where I cannot speak for myself. Particularly in this period of pandemic, you are partaking of this blood as a supernatural vaccine. So this is where we are. This is the body of Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter, John chapter 6, verse 50, this is what a man may eat and not die. Everyone that partake of this communion with me today, you will see January 1st, 2021. You will not go with this COVID-19. You will not go with this second wave. I'm told of people that are, have died and keep dying every day from COVID-19. You are not their candidate. By this communion, you eat your way out of COVID-19. By this communion, you eat your way out of that disease. This is communion of exemption, communion of mercy. This is what a man may eat and not die. For all the children at home, let them partake of this communion. You will not bury your children. Everyone watching me on Facebook Live, or you are watching me on YouTube, or watching me on, on, um, on Zoom, bring out your, your body right now. This is the body of Jesus. And let's take it for your healing in Jesus' name. Somebody, as I'm watching right now, you have a wound on your throat. It's like sore throat. By this communion, you are getting healed in Jesus' name. Drink this. This blood become the blood of mercy. Begin to declare where you are that this blood will speak mercy for me. This blood I am partaking of today, it will speak 11 hour miracle for me the way it spoke for the children of Israel. This blood will speak for me the way it spoke for the children of Israel today. The blood will speak for me. The way it spoke for the children of Israel let the blood speak for me. The way it spoke for the children of Israel. Let the blood speak for me. Shampa papa neko bolor bobo boboya. Let the blood speak for me. The way it spoke for the children of Israel. In the name of Jesus. By this communion, let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Where you are, begin to declare. Lord, let the blood speak for me. Let the blood speak for me by this communion. Let the blood speak for me. Yam pande keta lekata are partaking of this communion today. Let the blood speak in my family. Let the blood speak for me in this hour, in this last minute miracle, in this last session of this year, in the remaining days of November. Oh, let the blood speak my 11 hour miracle. Let the blood speak for my last minute miracle. Let the blood speak to secure my inheritance. Open your mouth and begin to declare where you are. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Amen. I want to let you know that every one of us that partaking of this communion, a miracle has begun in your life. A miracle has begun in your life. I have no doubt that between now and Monday, you will share your testimony. You will share your testimony of inheritance. You will share your testimony of what belongs to you in this 11th hour. Everything that belongs to you in this 2020, you are going to collect it. You are going to cross over to 2021 without carrying over. Write that down. It is going to be crossed over without carrying over. You are going to cross over to 2021 
without carrying over. It is going to be crossover without carry over. Write that down. It is going to be, you are going to cross over to 2021 without carrying over in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. I want to thank all of you joining us tonight, this night. Thank all of you for being with us through this broadcast. Uh, from Sister Ruth, uh, Terry Chagi from Zimbabwe. Thank you, Minister Celia, uh, Pastor Jack, and Dickness Anne. Thank you, Tony Adeshion. Thank you um, for joining us tonight. Demu uh, Biodu, Thank you, Asha. Thank you, and Matthews. Thank you, uh, Mama Joshua. Thank you. Uh, Lady Debbie, thank you. Star Debbie, thank you. Star Norma, uh, thank you. Star Sharon, thank you. Uh, Dickness Priscilla, thank you. Adin Casalaco, thank you very much. Lady Beverly, thank you. Uh, Borade, thank you. Uh, and everyone of you that has joined us in this broadcast, I want to appreciate every one of you. The Lord will honor you. The Lord bless you. You are going to have your own testimony in Jesus' mighty name. That comes to this brings us to the end of the book class today. I pray for you that the hand of God will be upon you. I look forward to hearing your testimony. Please get this book on communion. It will be a blessing to you. Get the book, it will be a lot of life forces. My book on communion, just get it. Is there just send a text message, I want that book. This is the book here, The Power of Communion for the Get this book to be a blessing to you as we share on this subject. And the master key to freedom, these are things that will help you. Get these materials, they'll be a blessing to you. God bless you. I look forward to coming your way tomorrow we are on back on this platform 8 p.m. tomorrow. And I know this coming your way from Destiny Church for all nation London and Washington, D.C. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow and on Sunday to be our Remembrance Sunday, to be massive. Don't miss it. Invite your friend to join us tomorrow. It's going to be very massive. God bless you. Have a very remainder part of the day. It is well with you. Bye-bye. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key.